So in Grand Rapids, Michigan, there happens to be a house of worship that is called Lighthouse Full Life Center. And Lighthouse Full Life Center actually took over a UCC church that had closed their doors. But the amazing thing is that Lighthouse did such a phenomenal job of ministry and reaching out to their local community that eventually not only did they expand, but they had to purchase a larger building. And if anyone has ever been to Lighthouse Center, you would know that there are two reasons why they expanded. The first is how they treat their first time <coughs> visitors. Anyone who comes in through their front door who's there for a first time, no matter who they are, or how they are dressed, or the color of their skin, or if they are carrying a Bible or not, are immediately escorted by one of the ushers to the front row, and for the entire service, if you are a first time visitor, you are made to feel as if you are a VIP. It is such an extraordinary occurrence as this church is located in a part of the city that is really a cross-section of all economic backgrounds. So sitting on this front row, you may see someone with sneakers next to someone with a suit, next to someone who is homeless or hungry or high. And by watching everyone sitting on the front row, this creates this amazing sense of equality and inclusion. Not one visitor is treated as better or worse than another. The second thing that makes worshiping at Lighthouse so unique is that every single person who's in the sanctuary is invited to participate in the offering regardless if they have cash or not. What happens during the offering is that the ushers stand before the altar and the preacher tells the congregation that even if you have nothing to give, even if you have absolutely no money, you can still come forward and touch the offering plate because simply your presence is a gift unto the Lord. And what they do with the offering is they start inviting everyone one by one forward, starting with the first time visitors, and everyone gets to come up and make an offering, regardless if all they can do is touch the offering plate. Imagine if you are completely broke, or imagine if you are literally a week away from being homeless, and yet you are still invited to give, even if all you can do is touch the offering plate. There's no wonder that Lighthouse has had to build a bigger building. And now we share this reason, this story, for two different reasons. The first is that today you are all going to witness me doing something brand new. If you've noticed over the past 13 years, I have always joyfully come forward to place my offering into the offering plate. But starting today, you are actually going to see me touch the offering plate, but not put anything inside. And the reason is very simple, that I have finally, finally stepped into the 21st century and I have finally signed up for online giving. <laughs> and one of the reasons why I've done this is that I want Emmanuel United Church of Christ and our financial people and our council to know that no matter what, they can always depend on financial gifts from me and that Emmanuel will always be receiving money to go towards the ministry of the church as well as the Shepherd's Pantry. But here's the other reason why I'm signed up to go online. I want free hotel rooms. You see, I have one of those credit cards that for every certain amount of money I charge, I get a free night in a hotel. And I've done the paperwork, 
and I figured out that each year I will probably get myself about two free nights in a hotel and I love nothing more than one night stays in Florida where you can just chill out by the pool and relax. So I've signed on to our Van Co giving and as far as I see it, it's a win-win-win. It's a win for the church because you know you're guaranteed to get a certain amount from me every month. It's a win for me because I get to rest in a hotel for free. And it's a win for the congregation because let's be honest, a happy, well-rested pastor benefits everyone. But the reason why I also shared about Lighthouse Center is how well it ties into today's scripture. Here we have a tale about a very hungry Peter who has an otherworldly vision. And then we also have Cornelius who's a very spiritual foreign soldier who just so happens to be living in a retirement town that's surrounded by water. And in today's reading, we get to witness how the good news crosses economic, political, and professional valleys to bring these very two different people together, and they become equals, and they become one. And yes, let's be honest, this story is rather surreal. This story is so science fiction-y, and this story, for me, is so absolutely hard to believe and I can't believe Tracy read it with a straight face because for me it's perhaps the most absurd story in the entire Bible. This vision of Peter involving a picnic blanket descending and rising featuring birds and gators and four-footed creatures and a voice saying get up and Peter saying oh no Lord of all the stories that are in the Bible I find this one to be the most obviously made up and the hardest one to believe that it actually happened. Of all the stories in the entire Bible, I want to give this story zero credibility. And you know what I really want to say? I want to say, Peter, if you really wanted a bacon double cheeseburger and you really wanted a shrimp cocktail, all you had to say was that you really wanted a bacon double cheeseburger with shrimp cocktail. What I want to say to Peter is you didn't have to be so over dramatic and you didn't have to go through this grand retelling and you didn't have to be so oddly specific because what you really wanted was a bacon double cheeseburger. But that's how I feel about this story. Regardless of how I feel, there are some definite truths that today's scripture is teaching us. This, this is the moment where everything happens for the Christian church. This, this is the moment in which the church becomes a place in which everyone is welcome. Amen. This this is the moment where the early church realizes that everyone is welcome to be part of the faith. This, this is the moment in which God makes it so clear that no one is impure, no one is unclean, and no one is an abomination. This is the moment in which Peter is able to welcome into his home someone of a different faith, someone with a different skin tone, and someone with a different background. And this is the moment in which Peter is able to enter into the home of someone who looks completely different than he does, who lives completely differently, and who speaks a completely different language. This is the moment that the church has been waiting for in which the gates of heaven are open for anyone who wishes to be part of God's kingdom and to fellowship within. This is the moment in which Peter and the church realizes 
that no matter if you speak Espanol or Creole, no matter if you speak American Sign Language or Dutch or Canadian French or Filipino or Caribbean or English or New York, you are a citizen of heaven and you are welcomed into the church of Jesus Christ. In other words, this story that Tracy just read is the moment in which the church discovers that everyone, regardless if they are wearing sneakers or a suit, if they are hungry or they are homeless, have all been guaranteed a front row seat in the house of God. And this is the moment in which the church realizes it is not a human's place to decide if someone is unclean or profane. But there is another element to this story that so much ties into our current church situation. Do you know that in the true fashion of the book of Acts, the ministry and the worship of Emmanuel United Church of Christ has truly expanded outside of our walls. You may not realize this, but thanks to the generosity of three individuals and thanks to the generous gift of $4,500 that have gone into the sanctuary computer and the mics and my wireless mic and cables and internet booster, we now have such an impeccable online presence. And thanks to the diligent work of Ruthie, our administrator, who has been gathering statistics, hard provable statistics, we have now come to realize that as a church, our presence now far exceeds just the people who are within the four walls of the sanctuary today. In other words, what we have discovered is that in the month of March, we have averaged 67 people in worship in the sanctuary each and every Sunday. But because of Ruthie's work, we have discovered in the month of March, we have averaged 86 households who throughout each week are worshiping with us online either through Facebook Live or YouTube, or there are people who are watching us on both platforms. So in other words, what we are experiencing as a church is something that's akin to a brand new blanket that has descended from the heavens, and we have now become a house of worship in which we can say there are 60, 67 people from within and there are at least 86 people who are beyond the limits of space, time, and language. So what does that mean for Emmanuel United Church of Christ? With this knowledge that we have more people worshiping online than we actually do within the sanctuary, it means that we have new things to do as a congregation. It means for our council, we get to create intentionally a way to reach out to our online worshipers and to find ways to include them in our membership and to reach out to them with ways in which they can give. It also means that we never forget the people who are right before us and we never forget the people who are in the sanctuary. It also means for our online worshipers, it means that you who are worshiping online are now going to be invited and encouraged to find a way to show your support to Emmanuel United Church of Christ to ensure that we all inside the walls and outside the walls can continue to worship together. Now as stated before, we have Vanco. We also have people who have money that is directly taken out of their accounts. And as one of my friends likes to laugh, we still are a congregation in which people like to write checks and put them in the mail. 
But soon we are probably going to find other ways to make the giving experience easier to give. So together we can all symbolically reach out and touch that offering plate. Regardless if you are here or if you are far away, regardless if you are in suits or sneakers, regardless if you are native of America or native of Colombia, if God could speak to Peter and the church via a floating picnic banquet that flied, God can certainly talk to us through technology and opportunity. So in conclusion, we are so blessed to be part of the family of God. Amen. Or, as Ari would say, familia de Dios. None of us are unclean. None of us are profane. And none of us are an abomination. Amen. All of us get to worship God in our own unique way. And all of us can be a blessing in our own style. <laughs> so may God continue to show us new ways to be the body, new ways to be the hands, and new ways to be the heart of Jesus Christ. And for that, let us say, Amen. Amen. Amen.